Lucy. Yeah, Joe and Lucy. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Alex. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. And you? He's, I'm good. That's All good. Right. All right, my friend. So we're going to do an intro, introduce you, and then we'll get started with the process, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right. Is it ready to go? Yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Paranormal or Reality, the podcast experience. My name is Joe. Hi, I'm Liz. All right, and we have a special guest today, Mr. KD. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he's on Instagram. He's out there making a lot of crazy stuff uh, regarding the the spirit box and ghost boxes. And we're going to talk to him a little bit and give him uh, a couple time, uh, a little bit of time to talk about what he does. He's also a paranormal investigator. So before, without further ado, introduce yourself, Mr. KD. Stuff, so you know, <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've been in the, in, into. I actually have a, always had an interest, and um, you know, I, I went in the army in 2007, and I uh, went to Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, learned how to work on electronics just a little bit. And then when I got out of the army, I decided to uh, you know start tinkering with electronics a little bit more. And I found, uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive some of the stuff you shared with me. I'll leave it links in the when we upload this guy so you can kind of see some of his projects and some of the stuff that he's really uh, incorporated out to other investigators. And he actually builds stuff directly for uh, specific individuals as well. So I'll leave that information in the description as well, guys. We, we were talking a little bit about your first experience. Could you kind of elaborate a little bit what happened and how uh, you interacted with the spirit when you were 12? Well, uh, I interacted with it by, you know, being scared as hell. <laughs> and taking off, running out the place. Yes. But, uh, yeah, now, uh, as far as like the actual experience, there was an old abandoned house and it was close to our house. And I was probably, I was about 12. And um, so I figured I'd go check it out one day. Um, after school yeah and I walked in and looked around the place I mean it, it had been left like people just took off molten in a hurry and just left everything the way it was but it had sat there for I don't know five years or so oh, wow. so was, everything was mildewed and the walls were yeah. falling apart and uh, it was just a, a weird feeling so I'm wandering around the house it felt really weird um, I decided to leave and when I decided as soon as I decided to to leave I turned to walk out and I saw what I thought was an apparition it was uh, like a dark like a black mass or whatever and yeah. you know you always hear shadow people yeah. uh, I guess you can describe it that way so I uh, uh, freaked me out I took off to run out and I had entered through a broken glass sliding door so I, I went out I just jumped right, right back out of the hole out of yeah. the sliding door and, and I did the glass fell down behind me kind of freaked me out yeah um, and so from that point forward and then you know school uh, I think about, that's basically my experience my first experience so I know you've been working a lot when we were discussing a little bit about your ghost helmet what where's the biggest thing that for it to go live i know you kind of had one customized it kind of looks like iron man if you ask me but uh yeah. uh yeah. what's the time frame that that you go have it finished or have you kind of really mastered it or what's the little glitches here and there that that's going to take well, for it to be well i mean it's it's still it's still an experiment you know it's just i don't believe it'll ever be a, a full a full-on, like, you know, completed yeah. device, in my opinion. Until, until uh, nothing is, though, as far as paranormal investigation equipment goes. Yeah. Until we can use it to uh, to get 100% of the time two-way communication, uh, in my opinion, the equipment that we use will never be complete. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's an ongoing experiment. Um, yeah, I do have a few teams that we work with and they you know i've supplied them with helmets so that they can uh have people on their team serious paranormal researchers only you know there, yeah. there's a disclaimer because there is a potential level of danger with the leds yeah 
you know, if you, if you have any kind of, like, a history of brain um, trauma or anything, you know, mm-hmm. a history of epilepsy, anything like that, it could be dangerous. And also the EMF, I mean, it, it is electrical EMF, and yeah. it's a little bit different than, like, your cell phone. But, yeah. Um, but it's, it's no hot, the levels that I use... And my EM calls is no higher than what you would see used um, in transcranial magnetic stimulation procedures, where they they uh, they use magnet, strong magnetic yeah. fields to influence a person's brain to relieve anxiety or gotcha. or yeah things like that. So so you know those levels are much higher than what I'm using. Um, it's an ongoing process. It's it's. Um, like I said, I don't think it'll ever be done. And yes, you're right. Iron Man is the <laughs> uh, helmet that I use for the one that I uh, just posted pictures of. And yeah. I sent you a few pictures of those yeah. things. Um, that, that belongs to Paranormal Task Force. And I was just rewiring the lights and everything. So Amazing. Yeah, amazing, man. It looked amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it, it almost, you know, some people look at it, they just laugh. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny. And, I've gotten a lot of, um, you know, the, the meme with the picture of uh, the doc from uh, Back to the Future. Oh, <laughs> I know what you're about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I thought it was pretty funny too. But um, yeah, so but but it's 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 uh it's actual science. But I'm just <laughs> you know putting. Yeah. The, I found that the the voice changer helmet was the best thing I could find where everything fit nice and neat where I wanted it and so you know it looks cool it looks yeah. better than the, the yellow moped helmet that yeah just overall I know that you you started working on the boxes and stuff what, what have you learned about I know you kind of sent me a couple of different pictures about the the boxes that you've been creating but what's the difference between uh your 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 boxes compared to the ones just like like generally that that's out there in the no more field right now because I know with the subwoofers they're a little bit more a little bit more amperage in there that you could use could you explain it a little bit more in detail for the audience well yeah um, okay so really the majority of ghost boxes being used in the field by paranormal investigators it's it's usually I'd say seven times out of ten, it's going to be either a SB7, which yeah. is that's usually the case, yeah. um, or a Shack Hack, uh, which you know basically is a re- in reference to any uh, off-the-shelf radio that you can basically go in and clip the mute wire and the um, the beep wire and basically hold the net, the uh, tune-up button down and it'll scan. Uh, you know, so the majority, the majority of your ghost boxes out there, that's what they are, and um, I, I think that works fine. I mean, I, I've had some of my best responses from from those types of radios. Uh, they're they're easy to carry around. They're convenient. Um, you know, they work really well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think the, the custom ghost boxes that, that people like me are building yeah I think they they added a, a few other you can add a, more layers to to um the whole experience you know yeah. um like actually do something towards the end of the show called rapid fire so me okay. and Luce rotate and we ask you quick out of the blue questions so are you ready for rapid fire <laughs> I don't know I'm a little worried <laughs> so uh since i started first last time i'll let you go and so it's, it's yeah it's anything random so uh don't hesitate to say your answer in detail or as quickly as possible uh okay, okay. Mm-hmm. got it did you ever make a list of places to investigate i did dracula's castle and um yeah i can't think of any other ones right now but i know that's number one mm-hmm. yeah. All right, my friend. Question number two. What is the funniest thing someone tells you when you tell them, yeah, I I invent or I create ghost boxes? What's been the funniest reaction that someone's told you? What? You mean like the ones they used on that Ghostbuster movie? <laughs> 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 
Uh, yeah, that's, did that's you true. ever think that you're gonna be here today, making these ghost boxes, or being an investigator? No, actually, I never really gave it any thought until about four or five years ago. <laughs> No, it's true. I think we could speak for ourselves too. I think no one actually goes into wanting this to be kind of a career, unless you're like a medium or something like that. But I could attest to that to that uh, statement. All right, my friend. Question number four. Are you ready? So, question number four. If you had opportunity to go besides Dracula's Castle to be on a TV show, would you take it? And would you be be able to do it overnight by yourself, like in the dungeon or something? Um, yes, and of course. Of course. <laughs> That's the answer I was looking for. I was trying to see. <laughs> now for the final question, um, do you like cats or dogs? Both. I like both. Oh, um, okay. my, my, my cat, Tiger, he's probably diabetic and he weighs about 30 pounds per, no, no that's in that direction but he's he, yeah he's really fat but he <laughs> um he sleeps with me all day because I work third shift so I don't know oh. man. He's, he's like my my I don't know you he's, bet attached, he's attached to me at the hips so I guess cats right now <laughs> I, have a, I have a dog too so I feel bad I feel like the cheek knows by saying that <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. And then the bonus, last question, I promise. If you ever, when you do an investigation or any investigation you ever did or do in the future, what would be the most intense thing that will happen, that could happen to you, that you for sure question being in the field? Like something so intense, like seeing the devil or something. Yeah, I guess if I guess if I a profession a profession oh. would would make me think twice about staying continuing doing what I'm doing. If somebody close to me were ever to be possessed, that would that would bother me. I agree. I think that's I think us as investigators and you as well. I think that's the biggest the biggest uh, fear and caution that we take when we go into these investigations because like you said uh, you're there you're opening yourself up to this world and uh, I think that's the scariest thing I agree with that oh, oh yeah that's definitely like you know you hear a lot of paranormal investigators say oh no I would or like with Ouija boards for example yeah. oh, I would never mess with a Ouija board okay yeah. well you're kind of taking a whole section of, of the paranormal history and just saying oh I would never mess with that you know, what we didn't have ghost boxes and SLS cams yeah. and, and all these other fancy stuff that we rent pods and everything yeah. else that we have that, you know, back then. So, you know, that's what they did for yeah. a long time. They knew that, throw down chicken bones, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much, you know, you can't swear anything off and some things are dangerous and that's just kind of the way it is and you, it's, it's an occupational hazard if you yeah. ask me and if you, if you swear something Occupational hazard, man. Yeah. It's kind of like if you, you know, if you, if you're scared of heights, you don't go work on skyscrapers. Exactly, and I agree too. Just like, for example, I've heard stories and read stories about every when you're messing with ghost boxes, you could, you know, something demonic could come through it as well. So, just because you just continue one aspect of the field, anything could bring a demonic presence that if it's there. So, right. I agree with you. There's, there's different mechanisms for, for uh, things to interact or yeah. enter into your uh, In our realm. environment. But, but, I mean, it's, it's, as far as the potential for any communication device we use, yes, if you start summoning things and yeah. trying to communicate with things, yeah, you're, you're opening yeah. yourself up regardless. Yeah. I agree, KD. Well, I want to thank you so much. I'm going to leave your descriptions and some of the pictures you sent me and uh, we'll keep in touch my friend because i'm really interested in one of your your boxes i have a, a event coming up where august in october i'm going to uh the queen mary so i really would like to oh, cool. get yeah get one of your boxes for that investigation and uh see what happens yeah. <laughs> that was another episode of Paranormal reality experience podcast 
thank big thanks to KD for being on the show. My we'll, thank you. We'll see you guys next week. Any final words, Luz? That was intense. <laughs> that was intense, yeah. That was intense, guys. Yeah. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Yeah.